Hi everyone, this is Eric from Dumb Game Dev, and today we're going to be looking at using a Vive controller to touch press uh, GUI buttons in Unity. And we're optionally, optionally going to use the trigger to trigger that event as well. So let's just jump right into that. And of course, the first thing you need to do is have a button somewhere in your um, Unity uh, scene. And I've set up a canvas here, and I'm not going to go over this, but uh, my canvas is set to a world space canvas so that you can actually touch it. And I've scaled it down significantly here so it fits. And I set it close to 000, which is where my location is. And I just created a button on that canvas, and there it is. Now, this button, um, there is nothing special about it. It's just a regular old button. Uh, I did set the highlight color to something different than white, so we can see that. I'm going to make mine maybe a nice blue color. Then once you've got your button, what you need to do is add a box collider to it so that we have something to trigger and touch with our Vive controller. So without some type of collider in 3D space, it won't know if something's touching it. And when you first add your box collider, I'm just going to remove this component and just go add component and say a uh, box collider. It's going to be ridiculously small. You, you mean you probably won't even see it. So we'll have to size it up quite a bit for it to be seen. You can probably see it starting now. So it's, mine's already 160 MIY. Doesn't have to be quite as big, so say 30. And I need a little bit of width to this, so the Z. So as you can see, mine's 160 by 32 by 10-ish for my button here. And there we go. So now we have a box collider. And I'm going to set this to is a trigger so that we can just uh, pass through it and there's no problems there. And I'm just going to move my canvas and button in my screen a little bit, or in my play space, so I can just touch it easily. So maybe for me, this button, I'll just change the text. Let's just say um, something like touch to start. So maybe we want to see that uh, the player has their controllers on, so they couldn't start the game without touching this first. So if they had only a keyboard or something, they wouldn't be able to touch to start. Right. So the next thing we want to do is, I, I mean, I already have VRTK set up. If you're going to use VRTK, you can do it um, with or without. So, But I've got my camera rig on here. And on my camera rig, and we can just ignore the VRTK part, we have the controller right and controller left. Now, in order for the for Unity to know that I'm touching something, I, I need some sort of a collider to touch another collider. So on my right controller, we have the model. And it should be disabled by default if we I guess we can't see it unless we have the game on, but there is the model under the right controller. So I add to uh, not a child of the model, but of the controller right, a sphere collider. So I've already done this. Now you could use any shape of collider you want. I've done a sphere. And actually what I did is not add a sphere so much as I just added an actual 3D object. It's a 3D object sphere, and that one's huge. And I just scaled it down to like say 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1. And so that will be your trigger area. And the reason I have um, used an actual object instead of just a sphere collider so we can see it. And at first I want to see it so I can position it well. Okay, so what you want to do is turn on your game. And now this is a child. If you turned on your, let's just see here. I think my controllers are off, so we won't even see them. But what you're going to do is turn on your game, and you'll see the sphere at the end of your of your um, of your uh, Vive controller, Vive controller. And so you just want to adjust the position around here using this this positional. And so I'm not going to bother doing that because I've already done it. But you can just go in and adjust the position. So the next thing you want to do is you want to make sure that it has a rigid body. 
So this is my example I've already set up. So without a rigid body, this is not going to work. And you want to make sure your rigid body is set to kinematic. So we just go like this, rigid body, uh, not using gravity, is kinematic, right? Then you also want to make sure the sphere collider is a trigger so it doesn't smash into anything. So just like this here, so there's the finished one. And then I'm going to turn off the mesh renderer so you wouldn't see it while you're playing because we don't want that to happen. Uh, you might want to give it some like fancy name so you know what it is. And right, so I also added mine to added added a tag to mine. So you could add whatever tag you want. I called my tag VR controller so that I'm only using the controller to trigger certain events um, rather than just any th old thing that just happens to uh, enter my trigger area. So maybe go ahead and uh, make a, a tag for yours. You can call it controller, VR controller, whatever you want. So that's it. So now you've got a uh, trigger area on the tip, hopefully, of your Vive controller. So just to double check that with you, make sure it has a sphere collider or whatever shape you want that it's set to trigger. Turn off your mesh renderer so that you're not seeing it all the time. And make sure it has a rigid body that's set to is kinematic but not using any gravity. Oh. Right, one last thing to that is you want to make sure that it's set to the ignore raycast layer if you're using VRTK. If you don't do that and you send out your pointer beam or whatever beam pointer you're using, it's going to hit this collider and then the collider is going to light up and you'll be like, what's that? Look like some kind of a bubble on your uh, Vive controller. So make sure your layer is set to ignore raycast and then you will shoot right through. Okay, so I've already gone ahead and done this for my right and left controllers, if you want to do that. And so now we have something to touch the collider on the button. So we've got our collider and our collider, they can touch each other. And I've set them both to trigger so that they can actually move uh, past each other. The next thing you want to do is set up your Playmaker script. And again, I've already actually set one up here, but we're going to reset it up. But I'll, I'll just keep it as an example for myself in case I forget what I'm doing. And um, so let's go ahead. So I'm going to just create a new FSM here, Playmaker FSM. And open this up and I'll edit it. And I'm just going to call this um, button click FSM so I know what it is. And maybe underscore tutorial. So, yep, looks good. So something like when button is touched or clicked, actions happen, right? Okay, so on the first state, we're gonna be waiting for a, let's go to my action browser. I wanna trigger event here because I know I, I want something to enter it. So on trigger enter, we want to specifically collide with the VR controller because we only want our controller to do that. And there's no event yet, so let's just make one called, I don't know, on enter, right? So we have to add a transition here called on enter. And when it enters, that could be simply it. We could have just, um, let's call state one, uh, listener it's listening for something and state two is you could have action happens here so that could be it that's all you need and if you touch it then it bam we've gone to the next state and you could load a scene or whatever else you want to do here now I'm gonna bring this a little bit farther I want something um, more to happen uh, let's for example say we want to highlight and unhighlight this button so if we go over to the button we see it has a highlight color and an un, uh, you know, a normal color. So I actually wrote a little script to um, help out with this, an action script. You can go ahead and uh, download it from my GitHub. There'll be a link to it in this um, YouTube channel. And you can hear my dog barking there. So we want to enable. So I'm going to enable the GUI button highlight state. So when we enter this state, the GUI button is going to highlight. So it's asking for which uh, button. And 
And so I'm just going to grab this button script and drag it in here. And so it's this button specifically that we want. So you could trigger different buttons, but I'm just going to trigger the one called button on, on the button. And then let's add a, another action here, another trigger action called trigger event. Put it down here. So now on trigger exit, we'll create a new event called on exit. You could call this whatever you want. And we're going to wait for the VR controller. Add this transition. So on exit. So on exit, it's going to go back, right? So this means when our uh, Vive controller goes in, it's going to go to this state that says action happened here. And then when the Vive controller comes out, it's going to go back to the listener state. Now, unfortunately, it is going to um, trigger the highlight here and then stay on indefinitely. So we want to. I created another little script here, which we can also download, called Disable GUI. So this is the opposite. And I will just grab from the inspector the button there. So now it will disable and enable this GUI um, state, which is the highlighted color. So let's try this out and make sure that it actually works. And then we'll So as you can see, when we touch it with our Vive controller, it goes to the um, highlight color and then back and forth. So how I would like to handle this um, myself is I want to be touching it and then pushing the trigger in order to confirm something. So if it's just touching, I feel like it's easy for it to maybe accidentally fire off the event. So I, I want um, another state beyond this. Now for this to work you do have to have the VRTK uh, installed and all set up. I'm not going to go into that in this tutorial. It's covered in lots of other tutorials but I just have it set up exactly how they talk about it in the VRTK tutorial. And that includes having the uh, VRTK controller events on my right controller and the VRTK uh, events on my left controller because we're going to need that in order to make this happen. Now beyond that you want to make sure that you have the VRTK uh, the VRTK actions downloaded. These are my custom actions. You can get this from my GitHub as well. So this will be in the uh, description for this video. And it will give you these VRTK controller actions. And the reason we want this is because we want to tr use the, let's see. Let's say get the trigger clicked event. And it's telling me I don't have the right game object here. So I'm going to specify a game object. And the game object I want here is the right controller. That's because I want the right controller to get the clicked event. And I'm going to move this farther up before this trigger event. So next I'm going to say every frame because I wanted to keep looking for this in every frame, not just one time. And it takes a bool value. So it's either trigger is clicked or not clicked. So I'm going to store this in a um, variable called say, is clicked. And then what we want to do to check, we want to check to see if this bool is true or not. So we're going to say bool, um, bool changed. So we'll use this one and put it after get trigger clicked. And so we want to see if this bool has changed or not, which bool is clicked. And if it's changed, let's create a new event called vive trigger clicked or vive trigger clicked create the event and so now it's here so if that bool becomes true and it is clicked we're going to have another state called uh, has been clicked 
Now, we will not know if this has happened when we're in the game. It will be hard to see. So I, I need to change this a little bit further so I can see in the game when this has happened. And to do that, I'm going to change this GUI text. Now, to change GUI text, I believe you need the this uh, Unity UI proxy. You can get this from the Unity website. So just go to Google and search uh, Unity Playmaker UI proxy, and you'll find it here. And what I downloaded is the package for UGUI proxy with full set of actions. And what that does is it's going to give me a bunch of actions I can use to change the UGUI easily. And let me just search for it here. I think it's easier for me. I'm going to call it maybe it's UGUI text. Right. So it's a UGUI text set the text or set text. So we'll choose that. It's telling me I need the right uh, game object, so I'm going to grab this text here. Let's lock this FSM. Grab the text and, uh oh, that's not what we want. We want to choose the specify game object, and the game object is the text here. So there we go. It's still red because it needs text, and then we'll just change to is or has been clicked. So we'll change the text to has been clicked here. And you know what? I'm going to copy this component or this action and actually add it to this one. So it will not only highlight, it will change the text. So let's paste it on here. Paste actions. It's at the bottom. We don't want that. I actually want it right at the top. I want it to be the first thing to change. And then I'm going to have something like click trigger to begin. So it will go from touch to start. Then when I'm touching, it will say click trigger to begin. It's going to change to the enabled color, which is blue. And then it's going to either wait for a trigger clicked from the Vive, or it's going to have a trigger exit event, in which case it will go back here and won't register. And if it does work and clicked, it will go to has been clicked. Okay, so let's save this scene. And Okay, not bad. There's one little snafu, which I noticed is that when we let go, we've entered this state, the second state with our Vive controller. It says click trigger to begin. And then when we go back, because we've removed the controller, it, it doesn't change the text back automatically. So people might be confused and might think, oh, I've entered once, I can exit and then click. So, I mean, I would probably copy this um, selected action and put it into the first one and uh, let's see here paste action before and then change this you know touch to start and that would be good now has been clicked you can trigger whatever event or action you want here maybe load another scene play a sound do whatever so that's how I would set up a um, touch event now you could just copy and paste this button and adjust things as necessary. So it's best just to set up one first and then copy and paste, copy and paste, rather than trying to set up every single button separately. There you go. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, go ahead and throw them in the comment section here on YouTube. Uh, go ahead and like things, please, if you like it, and uh, hopefully more people will see it, and I'll go ahead and make some more videos. Okay.